Okay, it's another day and it's another demo. So today we're going to be looking at the scroll saw. Now the scroll saw is primarily for doing uh, smaller, thinner pieces and primarily uh, pieces with very tight radiuses. Uh, you can make cuts on a scroll saw that you simply cannot make on uh, a bandsaw because the blades on the bandsaw are too wide. The blades on the scroll saw can be incredibly small. Um, this one, for instance, is one of the larger ones. Um, and it has no pins. There are two different types of scroll saws. There's the pinned type that actually has a small pin at each end that's perpendicular to the length of the blade. And that's what actually holds it in. It goes into a yoke that holds the pin. And that's how they put tension on the blade uh, when they tighten it. Uh, it's the, the pin tightens up in the yoke and it puts pressure on the entire blade. Now, uh, for the pinless blades, it's all done by friction. You have um, uh, brackets, top and bottom, and these have a screw on the side that you tighten, and there's a split down the center. And when you put the pressure with the screw, it compresses the two sides of the bracket onto the blade, and the blade is held in by friction. Uh, and the same thing, top and bottom. Now this one has a small screw that you need a wrench for. This screw has a knob on it so you can tighten this uh, with your fingers rather than the uh, wrench. So um, it has a, a large flat table. Uh, the blade goes all the way through and it rotates. Uh, it doesn't rotate rather. The blade moves up and down about an inch um, for each stroke. Um, there are two different types of scroll saws in the way the arms are located as well. There's what they call a C-arm scroll saw and a parallel arm scroll saw. Uh, this particular one is a parallel arm. If you can see over here, it has separate pivot points for each arm. Um, by putting the pivot points uh, further toward the blade and having a separate pivot point for each arm, it allows the blade to go much, much closer to straight up and down. A C arm has a single pivot in the back. Um, and both arms uh, rotate from the same pivot point. Now, under that configuration, the blade tends to go in an arc. Um, so it's, it's not so much up and down as it is in an arc. And that causes the, the, the blade to catch the board on the upstroke. So it does a lot more bouncing off the table than the parallel arm does. The parallel arm are, is the better of the two. Uh, it's also the more expensive of the two because it just simply costs a lot more money to manufacture um, a parallel arm scroll saw. Now, to actually install the blade, you would take the, the bracket and there's a, a holder for it over here. And on a chain, there's the wrench for it. Now, it also uh, matters which way the blade goes into the bottom. There's a illustration here on the side that you can't see from this angle, but it shows the teeth on the blade and it shows them pointing toward the back. So you would simply find the teeth on the blade and have them face toward the back and to the inside. So when you put the blade inside that slot and tighten the wrench, The blade is now held in the bracket by friction. Uh, you don't have to tighten it overly tight. Um, you can uh, mess up the blocks if you do. So you just tighten it just enough to hold the blade in there. Then it will slide through the slot and 
you just attach it to the bracket in the bottom. And now the blade is held at the bottom. Now the, the upper arm is where the tension is placed. And the tension is controlled here uh, by this uh, arm. You can screw the whole assembly down on to this bolt, but then when you cam this over, that's what's gonna produce the pressure. But before you lock this down, this blade can move up and down quite a bit. So you wanna hold the arm down, put the blade into that, the same kind of slot that's on the bottom, and when you tighten the nut, now you have friction pressure on the blade top and bottom. But the blade still moves a great deal. There's not enough tension on the blade. So you apply the tension with the tensioning device in the back. You would simply tighten this up until it's about the right amount. And then when you cam this all the way over, it puts the pressure on the blade. And once this is adjusted, then all you have to do is release the tension. And you can release the tension on the top of the blade when you have to replace the blade. Um, but you need to find the place where when you put the pressure on it, uh, the blade is tight. So that's what it would take to actually install a blade. Now, when it comes to actually making a cut with the, the scroll saw, you don't have that much clearance between the table and the top of this arm. Um, so about an inch and a half is the thickest material that you can cut on a scroll saw. Uh, most of the work done on a scroll saw is less than half an inch. Um, the vast majority of the stuff that's cut on a scroll saw is either eighth inch or quarter inch. Um, but you can cut very, very intricate uh, designs uh, with the scroll saw. And the one big thing that a scroll saw can do that a bandsaw cannot is make a complete inside cut. Now, to make an inside cut, you would take your material and you have your pattern on the material. And this one is a, a very crude um, O. And of course, the, the center of that O needs to be cut out. And you would not be able to do that with a bandsaw without actually cutting through the side of the O. But if you take a small drill bit and drill a hole on this inside portion, uh, and we'll illustrate it by the little dot I put with a pencil. Uh, you could simply take that, uh, take the pressure off the blade, release the blade. Then you could slide this blade inside the hole. And then once you do that, you would reattach and reapply the tension. And then you're ready to, this is on the inside. Then you would simply cut that out. Then you would release the blade and take the piece off the blade. So you can make a complete inside cut. Uh, with a scroll saw. And this is the only saw um, that you can make that kind of cut with. Um, there's not too much more to it. Um, there is a bellows down here. Every time this lower arm goes up and down, it activates this bellows. And there's a plastic tube that comes up here to a nozzle. And every time that arm goes up and down, it forces a puff of air through here and that blows out from the bottom of the upper arm and that blows the sawdust off the top of your workpiece so you can see the line that you're trying to cut without it being covered up with sawdust. So it has its own built-in uh, blower that blows the sawdust off the work. Um, there's not a whole lot of maintenance uh, to the saw. Uh, there's a zerk fitting on the top where you would use a, um, a, a grease gun to lubricate the pivot points on the upper and lower arm. 
And that's about it for maintenance. Um, it plugs in the same way everything else does. And the on off switch is right here on this side. It's a big white button. Um, it's a very versatile tool. It does an excellent, excellent job for cutting out small, intricate uh, designs. Uh, and there's a whole genre called scroll work um, where a, a great deal of the work piece is actually removed by cutting uh, the patterns uh, out of it. But there's all kinds of things that you can do with it. We will use this uh, saw when we make the um, the tray uh, to cut out the openings for the handles. And that's just about it on the scroll saw. Um, so we will cover another tool another day.